Hey everybody, welcome back to Megan's Playground HQ. I am Izzy and today we're talking about five cool tools that you probably haven't seen before. So what I have in front of me are some unique tools, and I've got a couple behind me that I want to show you. But before we get into the tools, uh, for the next few weeks, like every Thursday, we're going to put out kind of a, a tool video uh, just so we can get that little bit of extra content out and to introduce you guys to some really fun stuff that you may not have seen before, and then just some really high quality stuff that gets used a lot in the shop. So for next few weeks, every Thursday is like a tool video, and then Sundays we'll have our regular build videos up. So first off, I want to show you what I call the gentleman's multi-tool. Now I know multi-tools are hugely popular, especially on social media, you see all kinds of different ones. But for me, I don't really wanna carry something that looks like a multi-tool. This is the SOG Q3. It's just a very small, little compact multi-tool and you wouldn't know it by looking at it, but here you, when you slide it open, you have a pair of pliers. Now, these are no joke pair of pliers. These things can really get the job done. They cut wire just fine and you can get a really good grip on them. One of the things, our biggest problems I have with multi-tools is, especially me, I have a big hand and when you really bream down on them, I have been known to break the pliers pretty easily. I have not been able to break the pliers on these socks. So just like every other multi-tool, you're gonna find a myriad of implementation. So you've got a little knife, file, a square head and a pocket and a um, can opener. Right? Where's that? There it is. A little can opener. You cannot have a multi-tool without a can opener on it. Now in this case, this has a couple of things that you don't see on a multi-tool. And this, this has a very small um, flathead screwdriver. And if you're an eyeglass wearer, you know that this is going to come in handy and I use this all the time. Uh, so that's one of those things that's nice to see on a multi-tool, especially for a gentleman's multi-tool. And as well, it has just all the regular stuff like you would expect to see. It has the, the, um, the, the punch, it has a Phillips head, and it has, even has a little chisel on it as well. So when I'm gonna be carrying a multi-tool around, this is the one I carry. It slips nicely into the pocket with uh, very little need for um, like a big leather case that you'd have to wear on your side. So this fits right in your pocket and it's very comfortable to have in your pocket all day. The SOG Q3, baby. It's not very often that I promote an, an inexpensive product. Like this thing is $19. This is a uh, little pocket knife that I carry with me pretty much everywhere I go. I don't buy into buying super expensive pocket knives to carry around because eventually they all get lost. But this thing has been my constant companion for the last few months, especially because I garden quite a bit. So it, there's not a whole lot, whole lot to it. It has a really nice little flip open blade. The locks, it locks really well. There's a good detents there. So you feel it come and lock shut, which is always something you have to be worried about with inexpensive, inexpensive pocket knives. Uh, it's quite easily a one-handed open operation. Uh, it does have a little bit of a spring assist, not much of one. So it's not like one of those fancy ones that does it all by itself and it has a pretty good blade on it. I'm able to sharpen this blade and it keeps a pretty good blade with just average use for about a week and a half, two weeks before I have to sharpen it again. And for me, that's fine because what we're gonna show you next is a sharpening system that is absolutely a beauty to have in your shop. But what I really like about this knife is its inclusion of a pair of scissors in the back of the knife. And this is a legit pair of scissors. It's not some little, you know, rinky dink thing that you uh, would see in like a Swiss army knife or something. Now, because I do a lot of gardening, I'm constantly using stuff like garden tape, like this right here to tape up my tomato plants. It's nice to have. It's also really, really nice for pruning and keeping all my plants and stuff pruned back. And it's always, it's just always there. When you have a pocket knife you keep in your pocket, you never have to worry about it. Now, it will work for a lot of other things like this, like cardboard. I mean, it has no trouble going through this cardboard or even something as big as this right here. You know, so it does that just fine. So now, again, it's an inexpensive Amazon pro, you know, purchase. 
It's not super fancy, but for the price tag, it's really well made. I've had this one for months and months and months and I've been beating the snot out of it and have had no problems with it. I will tell you like any other pair of scissors, if you're doing like plants and sticky stuff, you can get it gummed up in there, uh, but just washing it real quick with some soap and water or hit it with some WD-40 and it has a nice little spring back so you're not constantly fighting that. That's all I really have to say about that one, um, but I would not I would not discourage anybody from checking this out if they think having a pair of scissors attached to their pocket knife would be something that would be handy for them. In my case, I'm constantly finding uses for both of these, so I really really like this like this one, and I'm I'm not sure if that's an R or a Y, but I think it's Roxon is the brand name of this. Um, again, it's just an inexpensive knife but i've been looking at some of the other stuff they put out and i think i might try a few of their other items as well because this is well enough made for that price point that i'm super happy with it all right so i might be pushing my luck with this one and it's well outside of the realm of actually um, a tool that you might want to use on a daily basis unless you are dealing with a lot of cardboard like we do uh, when it comes to cardboard, this is like the handiest thing I have ever found for like breaking down boxes, opening packages or whatever. And it's a product called a slice. Really nice. You put your hand in there and then a little ceramic blade pops out, which means you can cut tons and tons of cardboard before you need to replace the blade. As with a metal blade, it just dulls really fast when it comes to cardboard. So uh, you guys that work with cardboard can attest to that. But the other nice thing about it is that you can actually lay this right down on the cardboard Rake your hand all the way across there to not have to worry about getting knuckle burn on cardboard, which happens a lot to me. So when I found this product, I was like, this is the new product for me. But it is, again, it's super simple. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on it. I just thought it was unique enough and it saved me enough knuckle burn and other headaches and uh, to show it, to show that it has some, you know, it's worthy and it's valuable to take a look at. I feel a little bit silly about showing this to you, but if you don't know it exists, it exists and you work with a lot of cardboard, I'm telling you, this is the way to go. So this next one is, Again, it's one of those less expensive tools and I felt like when I bought it, it was kind of gimmicky, but I bought it anyway just to try it because I like discovering new and cool things. This right here hooks up to your drill, any type of battery or power corded drill to run a power carver. And this is, <laughs> it actually works pretty well considering what it is. So I wanted to show you my little setup for today. It comes with uh, four or five different bits and it just really easily can be put together and uh, blade, blades chain out with via a little hex nut right here. So the way I set this up is I use my little foot pedal switch right here, plug a drill, this one, into my little foot pedal switch. And then my foot pedal switch into a power source. And then I'll turn my drill on and lock it on. Maybe. Let me turn it all the way up and then lock it on. So when I hit the when I hit the foot pedal switch. Yeah, that works. So when you're in a sitting position and now you can mount your drill up any way you want it to, you have your foot pedal switched down on the floor, you just step on it. So when you remember to lock your drill in place, you just step on it and you have a quick little source for power carving. So this doesn't actually start cutting until you put some pressure on it. Once you put some pressure on it, it engages and it's, I'll show you. You saw that make some short work of some pine, which would be really easy to carve off spoons and other details like that. We're going to try something a little bit harder. I'm gonna, Brad, would you grab some alder? Perfect. All right. Let's try it on some alder. So, 
for a $35 kind of gimmicky tool that I thought was not going to work at all, this thing is crazy impressive. Again, it comes with four different bits. It comes with this bit, a straight bit, like a chisel bit, and a V bit. And you can get other bits for it as well. Now, speaking to the bits, they're made out of high carbon steel. They're not the best high carbon steel ever, but just a quick sharpen and they perform just fine. So again, it's an entry level tool into some power carving that costs you $35 and you can have you on your way, which is pretty cool. And I'll put links for this, the foot pedal, and all the other stuff that I've shown today in the description box below. But before we go, we're gonna show you one more tool, which is probably my favorite sharpening tool of all time. So this right here, not this, these cardboard wheels that I use for sharpening basically everything in my shop. These wheels are made out of cardboard. This one has a little diamond dust on it. This one, all it has is a little rouge on it. Now this is a product that I came across about 15 years ago. Um, a leather crafter turned me onto it. And you can literally sharpen things down to scalpel precision, scalpel precision with this particular uh, sharpening system. And it's fast. So I sharpen scissors, all my knives. I sharpen the kitchen utensils with it. Now don't go grab your best, your best kitchen utensils and just run out here and start sharpening it takes a little bit of practice to get used to getting a good edge with this and if you're not careful you can burn right through the steel so there are a couple caveats to this machine to using this particular thing uh, but as far as sharpening stuff goes it, it it's the best i've ever seen and it, it's under $50 to get set up, minus the grinder. This little grinder right here uh, is a win. I bought it cheap, and in this case, you don't run the wheels forwards, you run them backwards. So to do that, I just unbolted the grinder from the base, flipped it around, and um, put the switch on the front. That way, whenever I turn it on, it automatically spins backwards. So if you were to spin that the opposite direction, your knife edge would go right into the cardboard and it would try and throw it right into your belly, so don't ever do that make sure it's going in reverse i'm going to give you a quick demonstration of sharpening my little uh scissor knife here real quick um, i'm not sure good how good the lighting is over here in the corner but we're going to give it a shot and i think austin's gonna i don't know how we're going to squeeze you in here but we'll make it work so i did a video about this about two years ago i call it how to get your knife scary sharp and i'll i'll put a um, a link somewhere here on the screen um, but the basic rundown of this is you want to get a constant angle on your knife so if my knife blade is going to be sitting like this against i want to pretty much keep my knife blade parallel to the to the ground and come into it so i need to approach it at an angle that's going to be complementary to the existing edge on there so in this case i'm going to be about right up here now what i do when i'm personally doing it is i find that spot and then i'll visualize from where i'm comfortably standing down to something on the on the, the machine itself and i have this little orange nub right here so i'm visually going to look down that and that's going to keep Keep me holding my knife in the right position as I move it across because I'm going to use that nub as a visualization tool and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same thing visualizing that angle and keep it as constant coming across there as possible now that's important because you don't want to be changing the angle of your blade as you're running it down the grinding wheel so I'm going to go ahead and flip it on and show you guys how I run through it So with that, you want to keep a light touch. You want to make sure that you're using a finger up against the blade or on top of it, and that's going to keep track of the temperature. If it ever gets to the point where it's almost a little too warm to be touching, stop what you're doing and let the blade cool down because you don't want to overheat the blade. You will ruin it and uh, it'll make it so it doesn't stay sharp very long after that. So after this side is done, this is a side with the diamond dust on it and a little bit of wax over the top of it. And I just put a new coat of wax. That's what 
that's why you see all those different shades and variants. I go over to this side. Now this is just cardboard and white rouge. And again, I'll put a link in the description box below. It'll have all the stuff that comes with the kit. So a little bit of white rouge. And then after you put it, after you put the white rouge on, you want to turn it on and use a little cardboard to get any excess rouge off of there. And then it's the same situation here. I want to eyeball, keep that blade at the same angle as it was over here. So I'm going to use the same orientation over here. I'll use that little nub because it's the same on both sides as my orientation to keep that blade at the right angle while I'm sharpening it. If your blade is already you know pretty well maintained that's all it takes to put a scary edge on this now in most cases i'd have a leather strop out here to strop it real quick just to take the little tiny bit of a burr that it's on there but in this case i don't know where my leather strop is so i'm going to use my ideas book and it doesn't hurt to have a little rouge on that either Right, shipping information, that's a good thing to cut up. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so obviously, just on the paper, nice and easy, and in true Jimmy Duresta style, a little shave. <laughs> you notice I didn't have to scrape it like that. <laughs> so you notice I don't have to scrape it like this. It's literally just pull up and you're done. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, guys, so this is what I need from you. I need you to go down to the comment section and tell me whether you like this kind of video or not, because if everybody says, no way, I hated it, I won't do anymore. But if you found this useful, maybe some of these tools are some tools you haven't seen before and are you know are glad to now have seen them for the first time, it'd be nice to know whether this is valuable content for you guys or not. Now, this is great content for us because it's easy. Tool, vi tool videos typically get a little bit better viewership, which means our channel does a little bit better. So if it is something you enjoyed, thumbs up, let us know down below. We'll really appreciate it. Now, next week, we have some more unique tools coming, coming at you that I think you'll find very interesting as well. And I, I, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I mean, it's pretty basic and straightforward. But uh, for us, this is good content. It's quick content. And hopefully, it has some value for you as well. So if you did enjoy the video, of course, thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. You don't want to miss out on all the fun stuff we have coming down the pipe. See you in the next video.